full committee to attention. Good morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to this, the third meeting of the Standards, Procedures and Public Appointments Committee for 2022. Before we move to our first agenda item, I'd like to welcome our newest member, Colette Stevenson. Um, welcome to the committee, Colette. And I would like to give you this opportunity to declare any relevant interests that you may have. Um, thank you, convener, and good morning to all the members and the clerks here today. Um, just to make you aware that I am currently a sitting councillor in South Lanarkshire Council. Thank you. Thank you very much and welcome to the committee. Colette Stevenson is joining us to replace Eleanor Whittam and I would like to put on record my thanks for the work that Eleanor has done with this committee and seek the committee's approval to write to her to thank her for her time spent with us. Are we in agreement with that? Excellent. Thank you very much. We now move to agenda item one. Our first item today is for the committee to decide whether to take item four which is an item for the committee to consider its approach to the inquiry on future parliamentary procedures and practices. Do the members agree that we should take this item in private? Thank you for that agreement. Our next item is cross-party groups, and we have a number of applications before us today. The first group we will consider is a proposed CPG on islands, and I would like to welcome Jamie Halcrow Johnson, MSP, who is convener of the proposed group and who is joining us remotely to this meeting. Good morning, Jamie. Um, would you like to make an opening statement about the proposed CPG, please? Yes, thank you, convener. Can I uh, take this opportunity to thank uh, Sam Curry and the clerking team for all her support in getting the proposed CPG on islands to this stage? Islands have been an area of considerable interest for the Parliament in recent years, and for those of us who were here in the last session, the Islands Act was a significant step forward with its aim of re-establishing the relationship between Scotland-wide public bodies and island communities. The legislation was part of a broader recognition of the distinctive status, challenges and opportunities that our island communities have within Scotland. There's certainly a great deal of diversity between these areas. Some are represented by island authorities, some are connected with mainland local authorities, some have considerably better links to mainland Scotland than others, some have benefited from growth in recent decades, while others have faced problems around depopulation. However, what seems clear to me is that there is a great deal to be gained through collaboration, sharing of experiences and working to make this parliament better aware of the island perspective. And the proposed uh, CPG would seek to be a forum for discussion of issues relevant to those islands and to improve their links to the Scottish parliament. An initial meeting was held on the 14th of December with five MSPs in attendance and representatives sent by a number of others. And We've had an interest expressed from parties across the Parliament. I was also keen to ensure that it was not focused just on the Highlands and Islands, as a number of important island communities exist in other regions too. Discussion was held during that meeting in December on potential areas of work, highlighting island transport, uh, particularly ferries, energy and wider issues of depopulation, population and impact on island economies. And there was broad agreement that a future policy of at least hybrid meetings would be beneficial with the aim of increasing participation for those organisations and individuals that are dis distant from Edinburgh. There is an existing all-party parliamentary group on the islands that a number of MPs with Scotland's uh, constituencies are involved in. It would be my hope that some of the collaboration could be explored as we uh, go forward, uh, potentially with meetings with that UK group. There will naturally be some areas of overlap. Issues like sustainable transport and energy will be areas of interest across Scotland. It's my hope that the proposed CPG will bring a uniquely islands-based perspective on these matters. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jamie. Can I now open up to the committee if any members have any questions for Jamie? Over to you, Bob. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Johnson. Um, just looking at the Purpose Across Party Group, and as, as a city MSP quite far away from, from islands, I thought what, what might an interest in myself be in relation to the Purpose Across Party Group, and I thought about uh, the, the vital aspects of tourism. And for, for, for main island communities. I'm just wondering if the idea of sustainable tourism, but also responsible tourism, for which everyone in Scotland and beyond has a responsibility to be aware of and, and, and make sure that when we visit island communities that we are respectful and that tourism is sustainable. Might that be something that the cross party group may, may consider at some point in the future? Yeah, I, I think that's a very good question. There are a number of examples across the Highlands and Islands region in particular um, where um, island communities face real pressure from uh, you know, the impact of very successful tourism offerings. 
um, um, but that does create unique, uniquely island issues. For example, um, uh, capacity on ferries being uh, stretched and um, sometimes the case that local people and local businesses don't have access, but it is a wider issue than that. I mean, as I say, I think there will be overlap in other cross-party groups. I would certainly hope that we can work with other cross-party groups where we think there are, there are areas of um, potential collaboration. Um, but as I say, you know, our approach really is looking at these from a distinctly islands perspective, because often those solutions are different uh, for us in the island communities than perhaps they are uh, in other parts of Scotland. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Jamie. Can I just ask about the organisations that were listed in your application? Now, the application came in before Christmas, and there is a, a, a substantial list of interested bodies, um, but it states that at that moment, none were formally um, intending to affiliate to the CPG. Has that position changed in the interim, or are you still waiting to hear? Because I know there are a lot of bodies that clearly have been invited. Yeah, I mean, we have obviously, there are some areas where um, the, the interest has been discussed but not formalised yet. I think the key thing for us was to be able to go through the process, make sure that, um, albeit I'm hopeful that uh, Ross Party Group will get um, the approval today, that we can go with a kind of clear agenda and timelines and also help, uh, you know, these some of these bodies be part of that development, certainly in terms of some of the policy areas we cover. This has been quite a long process over the period. It's not just been from this parliamentary session at the back of on the back of conversations with different groups my previous four years uh, as a as an MSP and also um, you know going even beyond that uh, as a you know candidate and somebody just who lives in the island so we know that the interest there form uh, you know firming it up as it were will be the kind of next process and making sure that those organizations that want to take part uh, can do and also that that list isn't exhausted if, if there are other organizations from the highlands and islands particularly uh, that want to be involved that they're given the opportunity to as well excellent thank you for attending today jamie the committee will formally consider whether to approve the application for recognition at agenda item three and the clerks will be in touch with you after that decision can i thank you for attending the committee this morning many thanks the next group we'll consider is a proposed CPG on rugby development in Scotland and I'm going to welcome Douglas Lumsden, MSP, who is the proposed convener of the proposed group to the meeting. Let me take a seat. Good morning, Douglas. Uh, thank, you. <laughs> thank you, convener. And uh, thank you, colleagues, for uh, your time today. Um, I confess as a, a new a member of Parliament, I was actually surprised to discover that this Parliament didn't actually have a, a cross-party group focusing on, on rugby. Um, you know, Scotland has such a, a long history with the game, um, some years better than, than others. Um, I, I always like to point out we're still the, uh, the holders of the, the, the Five Nations tournament back in 1999, and I'm sure we always will be. Um, but it should be important for that contribution to our cultural history and our future development that this should be recognised by a cross-party group in, in this parliament. And rugby is changing. I, I looked back. Seemingly the first ever international rugby match was played on the 27th of March, 1871, and it was at Rayburn Place in Edinburgh. Um, Scotland beat England that day, and it was amazing. The score was 1-0. It shows you how, they, how much the game has, has changed. And that was in front of 4,000 people, and hopefully that's something that can be replicated again in a couple of weeks' time. Um, as I say, the, the game has changed completely since then. The game now is a, a game for, for everyone. Um, we've seen the incredible emergence of women's rugby and clan rugby, and we've seen safety standards increase, and the professionalism of the game is there now, but it's still important that the, the grassroots game still is protected and, and evolves. Um, so this cr cross-party group invites the Parliament to consider that development and how we can go further how we can make the game more inclusive and make sure it's as safe um, as possible in the years to come. I'm really pleased to have two key partners on board with this group, the Scottish Rugby Union, who's providing secretariat support to the group, and also School of Hard Knocks. They're a fantastic charity who uses rugby uh, to support young people in Scotland. Um, so thank you again for the committee's time um, this morning, and I'm uh, happy to answer any questions that the committee has. Excellent. Thank you very much, Douglas. Does any members of the committee have any questions for Douglas? 
Bob, pass over to you. Uh, just a, a brief question, Commissioner. I should point out my, my first ever engagement with the cross party groups in this Parliament was sporting related, because the first ever email I received as an MSP in 2007 was from the late David McLeach for a cross party group in golf. So there's a long tradition in this Parliament of, of sporting cross party groups. But my interest in this cross party group um, is the involvement of the School of Hard Knocks. Because I've seen firsthand in my constituency in Maryhill and Springburn how they've worked with local partners to get not just young people but various sections of society that otherwise wouldn't think about rugby as a sport for them to use it as a way of um, doing team building, team bonding, le learning skills, and even signposting to college for further educational opportunities as well. So uh, I think it would just be an appeal that should this cross party group receive recognition uh, if you do any work in relation to work in deprived communities and vulnerable groups. I think there's a wider range of MSPs would be interested in following that, even if we're not formal members of the cross-party group, because the School of Hard Knocks comes with a really strong reputation. Yeah, no, absolutely agree, and that's, um, you know, delighted to have them on board. Because, you know, as I say, I, the key intention for, for this group is to, is to get more and more people involved with rugby. And, and I'd say the School of Hard Knocks is probably using rugby as a medium to, to you know, to engage more with different people that might not um, think about rugby in that way and, and really trying to improve their lives and, and to try and improve their um, outcomes. Um, I mentioned clan rugby as, as well, and that was something I wasn't um, aware of before I became a, a member of parliament. And that's really trying to involve people with um, disabilities, whether that's a, you know, a physical disability or, or, or a learning disability, trying to engage with them, to try and get them involved in, in clubs and, you know, mixing with people without disabilities and, um, you know, just the whole cam camaraderie together. And, uh, you know, I think the work that, you know, they're doing as well has been really key. So as a cross-party group, if we can engage a lot more with the, the School of Hard Knocks, I think that's good. And, and engaging with the, the, the clan rugby side, I think, is, uh, as well, just to make sure that we can, you know, just you know, get everyone working together just to try and improve outcomes. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Colette, I think you have a question. Yes, thanks, convener, and, and good morning, Douglas. Um, I, you touched a bit um, on inclusive, um, and I just went, I looked at the, the members list, and I note that it's all males. Um, I was just wondering what you're doing, um, along with the fellow um, members on there, to maybe attract more female members into the group, um, to, to basically, you know, increase inclusivity within that. Yeah, no, you're, you're right, and it was something that occurred to me um, at the time when I put the application in. I'm, I'm happy to uh, report that I've actually recruited another um, member to the, the CPG. Um, so Jackie Dunbar has uh, agreed to join us as well. I managed to uh, rope Jackie in. Um, so, yes, that's something that is... Um, is aware, uh, aware of and also looking at the, the groups that are involved really there's been you know from our initial um, meeting that we had before obviously the, the group is, is uh, formalized there is suggestions about um, other women's rugby clubs that we can try and get involved as well and yes that will be uh, addressed okay, thank you thank, please do so thank you Douglas yes picking up on the gender issue I'm a bit more of a hockey player which probably detracts me a little bit from joining the rugby but yes very aware of the benefits of team sport and how that can be a great leveler and tra tackle inequalities um, and I can with all the connections I have even with clubs rugby clubs in Edinburgh I'd be delighted because Curry Chieftains have got a great women's set up and I know that women's rugby in the city is thriving so and Spartans all sorts so that's, that's good to hear maybe I've got a new member already convener <laughs> <laughs> I'll dip Careful. in and out. <laughs> Careful. Careful who you poach. I suppose just to um, follow up on both of that, obviously School of Hard Knocks, which, which rightly has been um, spoken of very favourably this morning, and SRU are the two organisations that are named, but I'm assuming that you'd be looking um, to other organisations, and I was thinking then particularly at club level yeah. um, for input on that. Yeah, yes, that's... Um, something that we, we spoke about as well and that we get, you know it's not all about the you know the international game it is about the grassroots and and I, we are talking to to local clubs as well yes. to get them in, involved that's very helpful thank you um can i thank you for attending this morning douglas the committee will consider whether to approve the application for recognition at agenda item three and the clerks will be in touch after that time to inform you i'm now going to have a short suspension for a changeover of witnesses
Thank you. The next group that we're going to consider today is a proposed CPG on sustainable transport. And I would like to invite Graeme Simpson, MSP, who is the proposed convener of this group, to the meeting. Welcome this morning, and in uh, person this time, rather than the IT problems that we had last. Um, Graeme, would you like to just explain again the intentions of the group, please? Yeah, well, thanks, thanks very much again, convener. Um, I thought it would be uh, much safer to turn up in person rather than rely on technology. Um, for the new member of the committee, uh, two weeks ago, I tried to make this pitch, and my uh, uh, basically my uh, parliamentary uh, surface device decided to turn itself off uh, as I was uh, in mid 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 flow, uh, about to get into the meat of the the issue. Um, so, just um, if I can just go over some old ground, um, the history behind this is there were in the last session uh, two cross-party groups which relate to the, the what this one is proposed to do. Um, there was a cross-party group on cycling, walking and buses, uh, which I was a co-convener of, uh, and there was a separate one on uh, railways, um, which uh, John, John Mason was a convener of. And uh, a group of us who were involved in in these groups uh, got, to, got together and we thought, well, may, maybe it makes sense to actually merge these groups in, in the next session. So those talks started in the last session uh, and have continued, and, and we decided that actually it made far more sense just to have one group. Um, part of the reason, actually, behind that is that, as you, as you will be aware, convener, there is a problem uh, and we'll probably face this problem as we go through this session of MSPs attending cross-party groups. There's a, a rush of enthusiasm at the start, and then numbers start to tail off. And I think that's that is an issue. It's maybe something this committee could could monitor uh, because it's actually not fair, I think, on the various groups that actually turn up, particularly particularly if it's in person. So anyway, if we if we if we turn to what what this gr this particular group um, is intending to do, my view is that cross-party groups have in the past tended to become talking shops. Um, people who agree with each other, uh, talking to each other, going away, everybody's happy, and then nothing happens. Uh, my view is that. To make it worthwhile, a cross-party group should actually do something, uh, do some work, do some research, produce reports. And that's, that's why I want to be involved in this one, because everybody agrees with that. So we've, we've actually got a program for the, the, the initial year. Um, and the first bit of work that we would like to do, if, 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 we're, if we're given approval, is to look at uh, traffic reduction policy. The Scottish Government uh, produced a, a paper last week um, spelling out how they would like to see car miles uh, reduced over the next few years. Um, so we'll be drilling down in, in, into that. Uh, and in fact, if we are given approval uh, this morning, we'll be meeting at lunchtime. Uh, and we'll have a, a presentation from uh, uh, Scottish Government official, somebody from Transport Scotland, uh, just to get that ball rolling. And then probably what we'd like to do is meet every, every, every month, um, so it's quite a programme, um, and actually produce, re produce reports uh, with recommendations. We'd also look at uh, traffic demand management, how to get the modal shift uh, to get people walking and cycling and using public transport. Uh, I know there are there's at least one member who has strong views on that of this committee, uh, but I, uh, to me, I think I think that's really really important. Um, we need to, you know, whatever you think of cars, I think it's a positive thing to get people more active, and that's what this group will be looking at, uh, uh, and also not just more active, but the the whole public transport aspect of things. I think it's uh, absolutely vital that we, we look at ways to help public transport build back 
uh, build back better, if I can uh, borrow a phrase, uh, get more people onto buses and trains. So it's very much, it, it's not going to be a talking shop, it's going to be a, work, a working group. So I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Graham. Does anyone from the committee have questions? Sue. Firstly, uh, Graham Simpson, you've per perhaps portray portrayed me as some anti-sustainable transport guru, and I'm not. I'm very much, very much a believer in public transport and making that accessible to all, um, which is where my challenge does come. So, uh, in terms of the active travel agenda, I'm very, very passionate about eco-ableism, and I have grave concerns that many active travel policies discriminate against disabled people and those that are got mobility issues. And also the sweeping statements, um, if you watch my committee contributions on Tuesday, when you stop, when people talk about going from walking to wheeling, there's a whole lot in that range of mobility from walking to wheeling. So are there groups that you're involving in the CPG that will help that voice of those uh, with mobility issues, those that are disabled, blind, hearing and mobility impairments, are they going to be represented on the CPG? Because without their voices, it doesn't matter what reports are presented, you are creating more uh, inequalities in society. No, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, we, we need to cover uh, all, all sectors of society, um, people who are disabled, elderly people, uh, yeah, young people. Um, and I'm just looking at the extensive list of organisations that we have our initial group of members, and there have been more since who want to join. Uh, and I, th I don't see any specific disabled groups in there. I think it's. Sorry, you do have the Midlothian Disability yes. Access Panel, who are okay. phenomenal. <laughs> well, that's that, that's encouraging. Um, but that certainly there are groups in there who do speak up for disabled people, even if they're not specifically disability groups. I'm just concerned that the voice of uh, and uh, the cycling f f body will be overrepresented, and I just want to make sure there's balance. Uh, I've had that challenge in the city of Edinburgh and I, we continue to have that challenge in the city of Edinburgh uh, with the 40 kilometres of cycle lanes that have created 40 kilometres of road space that people with disabled badges can no longer access. So I am gravely concerned if that membership doesn't reflect a more balanced view in terms of those with the mobility issues. If you were to look at the membership list, which you should have in front of you, you'll, you'll see it is not just about cycling. Um, as you know, Ms. Weber, I am, I am a cyclist, but I am not. I am not a man in Lycra. Uh, I am not somebody who can achieve any great speed and cause, uh, cause alarm while I'm cycling about. Um, this is, the, the name of the group is Sustainable Transport. It's not cycling. So we're covering ferries, we're covering trains, covering buses, we're covering walking and cycling. So it's not just about cycling. One of your first submissions was, in essence, about the bringing together of two former CPGs so that a full and wide voice, and certainly um, I'm going to presume rather than even assuming that the organisations that are currently listed is not now a finite list and that other um, groups, organisations, indeed voices that need to be heard will find favour to be listened to by the CPG in the production of a report. Um, and there are a number of questions coming from the committee. Good. You'll be glad to know, Graham. Good. Um, can I pass over to you, Colette? Yeah, thanks, convener, and um, good morning, Graham. Um, I, I very much welcome um, your CPG, and um, as somebody who previously worked in outdoor education, I completely understand the the benefits that come from outdoor ed, and in particular, and, and as a fellow East Kilbridean as well. Um, uh, the cycling and, and some of the routes that we've got in East Kilbride as well. And um, I'm completely for all promoting that. I note from the membership list as well, and, and, and Sue sort of touched upon that as well, as like having a young person's voice there, because I know even from um, uh, my, my daughter and, and the young people that I worked with, uh, and some of the children home, children's homes as well, that got involved in outdoor ed, um, that um, 
more young people should have a voice in terms of particularly cycling, but even, even transport links and whatnot as well. Is that something that you would be considering um, going forward in terms of having a young person uh, come forward on the cross-party group? Um, yes, I think I, th I think that's a really good idea, actually, because I think one of the challenges uh, that I found, um, particularly when I was a councillor, actually, Colette, is that you find that ki kids will cycle to school when they're at primary school, and when they get a bit older, it becomes uncool. So you'll find that you, you, you might have lots of bikes outside primary schools, but you won't have any outside uh, high schools. So I think I think it's a really good point. And, and just as you were speaking, it just occurred to me that perhaps um, it would be an idea for for this cross-party group to reach out to the Scottish Youth Parliament uh, and, and perhaps ask, ask them to become involved. I don't know if they're involved in any cross-party groups, but it would it, it's an idea that's occurred to me. Um, and I would also uh, invite you, if we get the go-ahead, to maybe become involved. I hadn't realised you had that outdoor education experience, so you'd be a, a, a very useful voice indeed. The number of CP, potential CPGs trying to poach members this morning. Tess, I think you have a question. Um, thank you. So I, I also welcome this CPG. Just a question on your focus of rural versus cities. So you can't focus on everything. And a lot of people in rural areas have issues that, you know, if they don't have a car infrequent bus travel whatever so you could just focus on cities so so is it 70 30 50 50 or 100 percent cities no it's not it's not 100 percent cities um in fact one of the, I, I think one of the issues i found uh in the cpg that was all involved in the last session cycling walking and buses it was quite edinburgh centric um so i'm keen that that's not the case I'm very alive to that, very alive to that. Um, this is a cross-party group, as, as they all are, really, for the whole of Scotland, and not, certainly not just, not just urban Scotland. Uh, there are specific issues in rural areas, as, as, you, as you well know, um, particularly around public transport, actually. 50, 70, 30? Well, I, can, I, I, I wouldn't want to put a figure on it. We're, look, we're looking at um, issues generally, um, so when we produce a report, it would be reflective of the, the whole of the country. Good, thank you. Thank you. Bob. Uh, thank you, Vera. I was uh, inspired to, to, to ask a question, Mr Simpson, following some of the exchanges here this morning. I was taken by the inclusivity of your approach to the cross-party group about those who maybe want other voices to be represented in the cross-party group. Your door is open be that other third party groups or other MSPs in this place. So we commend you for that. I'd also commend you for trying to be more efficient and streamlined about approach to cross party groups in this place. You make some pretty important points in relation to that. Um, there is a cross party group in this place, which I'm not involved in, I have to be, to be honest, on disability. And I was looking at some of the non-MSP membership list of that cross party group and given some of the the, not concerned, but some of the considerations that, 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 that were, were floated today, it might, it might just be worth your while um, keeping the cross party group and disability aware of your work. It doesn't mean they want to necessarily do work on it, but they've got a pretty strong network of groups there where they can disseminate information uh, in relation to the work of, of your cross party group. And it was just a suggestion, Mr Simpson. Yeah, I think, I think that's a really good idea, and I think uh, actually, Jamie Halcrow Johnson, who you had on earlier, um, touched on on this uh, that, that cross-party groups can work together. Uh, it has happened in the past, uh, of course. Um, so yes, I think there's a big opportunity, uh, and I would just say that my door is always open to you, Mr. Doris, if you want to pop in, and uh, indeed any other member. I put the kettle on, Mr. Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Bob. Thank you, Graham. And if the um 
cross-party nature of this committee is reflected in the potential cross-party group that you're forming, I think it would be very beneficial. Can I thank you for attending this morning, Graeme? The committee will consider whether to approve the application for recognition at agenda item three, and the clerks will be in touch with you after that. But thank you for coming this morning. There'll now be a short suspension while we change over for witnesses. Thank you and welcome back. Um, I would, uh, sorry, where am I? Oh, final group, of course, yes. So the final group that we will consider today is a proposed CPG on sustainable uplands management. And I would like to welcome back, but with a slightly different hat, um, Paul McLennan, MSP, who is the proposed co-convener of this proposed group. Good morning, Paul. Would you like to make a statement about the purpose of the group? Yeah, thank you, and it's good to be back in, in another guise in the, in the committee this morning. I, yeah, I mean, I suppose a bit of background was East Lothian's a rural constituency, and I suppose in the first few months I was, I was you know, touring some of the groups, and there's it's about seven grouse moors, for example, in, in East Lothian. Um, so when I was up speaking to, to some of the, the owners and, and landowners around about that, and there was other groups around about that, it was very clear to me there was there was a need for, for the cross-party group, because I think there are different views. And the real purpose for me was to try and bring forward and bring together these different views. There's a lot of legislation that's going on in the moment in, in that sphere, if you like. Uh, we're talking about biodiversity uh, issues that are going through just now, obviously the climate change issues, uh, grousement management, deer management, and obviously the just transition as well. So the purpose of the group was to bring forward um, or bring together the two, I'm not saying two sides, but there are different opinions, let's say, within, within that, that whole that whole debate. And for me, I think it was trying to bring, bring all that together and try and get a reasoned debate around about that and obviously inform, um, I suppose, legislation and inform that debate going on. So that was the main thing um, behind it. The, the intention when we set up the groups, as you can probably see, there's quite a wide range of organisations that are involved. Um, again, very much with different opinions in, in that regard. So, as I said, the intention was to, to bring people together. And we're aware, obviously, as well, that there are other groups. So, before I'd done that, obviously, we looked at other groups. There's, I think it was mentioned in the application form about rural policy, crofting, animal welfare, and so others. And, and I think, as you heard from the previous chair, there might be an opportunity to work with some of these groups as we develop, I suppose, the, our, our, our work programme, if you like. So, but I think there was a specific need around about uh, sustainable uplands management. Um, but it was really to, the, the real reason for me was to try and bring together groups that had a different opinion to try and get that reasoned discussion. It's been a very emotive issue over a number of um, a number of months and a number of years. So the purpose was to bring that together and say, right, okay, let's see where we can get some mutual cooperation and, and mutual understanding for any of the issues that that are out there. So that that was the reasoning behind that, Chair. Thank you, Paul. Does anyone on the um, committee have any questions of Paul? Oh, Sue. Yeah, no, no. Well, I'd, I, let me know if this is in scope or out of scope. I'm not sure. Just I've got a, a half urban and rural constituency, I suppose, in terms of I've got the Pentland Hills. So I have a lot of cons questions come to me about the balance between the, ha the right to access and roam versus the right to responsible access and roam. I didn't know if that was something that your group may be considering, just out of curiosity. But we've had, you know, the initial discussions we had was, was around about that, that, that has had issues mm -hmm. um, about the right to roam and, and the right to access and the different opinions from that. So again, that, that, this is probably quite, I suppose, an example of the group and different opinions and trying to balance that. So it's trying to get that. So yet that has been issued and uh, discussed and in, in, you know, I've got local issues in my own constituency. And I know there are other issues in other constituencies. So they, that has been discussed. And part of that, I think, is around about um, education, engagement with, with different groups and organisations within, within that. So I'm sure that issue will be raised uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Sue. Any other questions? Colette. Yeah. Uh, I know from the... Uh, sorry, thanks, convener. Um, sorry, and, and good morning, Paul. And I, I know from the name of it, it, it is Upland. Um, and one of the things, uh, you know, as uh, East Kilbride um, constituency MSP, I have been looking at is lowland deer management. Um, so, you know, you touch upon Upland, and it's a type, a, a different type of deer. It's like every day's a school day. Um, at the moment, you learn something new. But, but equally as well, um, 
you know, has there been, uh, you know, talk about sharing information on that? Because we have very little in the way of um, uh, lowland deer management uh, within the central belt of Scotland. Um, and is that something that, that, you know, that we're isolating them, if you like? You know, I don't want to be left out. Paul? <laughs> no, I, I, and I get that point because I think obviously some of the issues are, you know, we're talking about grouse, uh, grouse management and deer management, so on, which is which is not exclusively for, for upland management, but predominantly for, for that. But I think there's an opportunity, and I think that's a good point to raise. If it's approved at the next meeting to say, look, there's an issue around that, can we discuss that as well? I think a lot of the groups that are involved would also be involved in, in lowland management as well in terms of that. And, um, you know, we've tried to be as diverse as possible in terms of the groups that have been in included in that. So I, I think that's a really relevant point to take forward because I think wh wh where do you define upland and where does lowland become upland? Where does upland become lowland? So I think that's an issue that, that, that that's relevant because um, I visited Chihalian just the other uh, a few months ago, and they were talking about that, and, and they were talking about right where are the you know, where, where was almost the, the border in terms of upland and lowland, in terms of deer management there. So that wasn't a specific issue. So, but I think that's a relevant point. I think that I would take forward to the next discussion group that we had, and then you know, obviously raise that and say, look, can can we discuss that issue? Because I think it's very relevant. So, where do you define upland management? You know, where where does it stop? Does it have to be of above a certain height and so on? So, yeah. that, that and there's nothing defined as such in that. There's no clear definition of what that is, but. Um, by its very nature, when it becomes up, when it then goes into the issues I said around about, which can prove to be the controversial ones, um, raptor protection as well as one that's really relevant uh, as well and has been brought up. I'm sure we've all had correspondence on that one. So, um, But yeah, no, I think it's a really relevant point to take forward. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Colette. Any other questions? I'm sure the deer aren't concerned whether we define it as upland or lowland. I think they're just after food. <laughs> Bob? Very briefly, Paul McClellan, I suppose it just put some information in the public record. It's not particularly personally across public with indulgence of the convener, whoever you mentioned, raptor persecution. I am the species champion for the peregrine. Um, and I, I would just note that the peregrine can often be an urban uh, bird as well, quite often uh, ha having um, uh, habitats including high rise flats and industrial cranes and the like. So, uh, the, the whole of Scotland is covered by, by, by parts of your work, but I just thought I'd put that on the record. No, I, I think that's an important point. I, as you know, I mean, the raptor protection, it's, it, it's a really emotive issue uh, that's out there. You know, how, how do you balance, I suppose, you know, if it's a grouse moor, how do you balance that? You know, with the likes of the RSP, you know, we've got RSPB in, involved in that as well. So it's trying to get that balanced approach uh, in terms of that. And, and again, it can be very emotive. And there are two sides of that debate. So, again, coming back to the purpose of the groups to try and bring forward both sides of the debate, if you like, and try and get that informed discussion and, and moving forward together, if we can, if we can, of course. There don't, there's always going to be uh, agreement on all these issues, but I think it's an important group, I think, to try and discuss and debate through, because there's a lot of legislation and a lot of things happening in that, in that specific sector, which affects all parts, you know, we've heard from urban or, or, or rural, so it affects most constituencies in Scotland. So. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. And I just, um, for the record, confirm that it is Scottish land and estates that are providing the Secretariat cover. And indeed, Edward Mountain, who is a member of this committee, is one of the um, deputy conveners, but um, Edward can't be with us today. The only other um, point I was going to mention for the record, um, and this is in no way a criticism, Paul, that the code requires all groups to provide 10 calendar days notice of all meetings. Um, and that that has to be notified to the standards clerk in course. But I know that you as a former member of this are very aware of that. Um, can I thank you for your attendance today? The committee will, as you're aware, consider whether to approve this application for recognition at agenda item three, and the clerks will inform you of the committee's decision thereafter. Thank you for coming this morning, Paul. Thank you. We can now move to agenda item three, which is the cross-party group approval. Um, it is for the committee to consider whether to accord recognition to the proposed cross-party groups for islands, rugby development in Scotland, sustainable transport and sustainable uplands management. Are there any questions or comments from the members before I put it to Sue? I do have issue with the sustainable transport, given that the highway code is changing this week to really reinforce that pedestrians are top of the transport hierarchy that they are poorly represented in this uh, cross-party group. Uh, there are only two organisations balanced off with nine for cyclists and ten for rail. 
and I do think that there needs to be far more representation from both pedestrian groups and also those with mobility and, uh, and disabilities. And that's my grave concern. Thank, thank you for that, Sue. And then, I mean, as far as being the, the technical side within this committee of the cross-party group, there is cross-party representation. And I think, you know, um, it was an interesting discussion, and I will call it a discussion, um, between the proposed convener and this group about what... Um, what groups are and indeed what individuals are represented and can feed into it. Um, and certainly it is on the record um, the view of um, members of this committee about the people who should be listened to when they come. And there certainly seems to be a very strong workload that they propose to do. Um, and I would hope that, you know, as Bob suggested, there are other cross-party groups that can be reached out to for um, for input into evidence um, and I hope should we agree the group that they indeed take up that suggestion, in fact take up all of the suggestions that have been made this morning. Thank you Sue. Would anyone else like to comment? No? We will see. Fine. Um, so I'd now like to um, invite members to accord recognition to the proposed cross-party groups on islands, rugby development in Scotland, sustainable transport and sustainable uplands management. Are we in agreement? Excellent, thank you. I will now close the public part of this meeting and move into private.